With Starfield only a matter of days or hours away depending on which edition of the game you might have pre-ordered, I thought it would be a great time to revisit another Bethesda Game Studios title, that being Fallout 4. But this time around, unlike the Oblivion video, I don't have the energy to pretend to be intelligent. So instead I thought I'd format this video like those secret lists that I've been doing for the past year or so, because I haven't done one in a little while, and it's time to return to that. I quite like doing those. They were quite easy going, they were quite enjoyable to re-watch, so we're going to be exploring 10 secrets in Fallout 4 that I'm sure most people probably know about, but I haven't really properly sat down and done a playthrough of Fallout 4 since the game released in 2015, so a lot of these things were new to me, and no I didn't stick with this face because I actually have to look at it. The criteria for what qualifies as a secret is quite simple, something largely off the beaten path, that might be an easter egg, it might be some cool loot, or something along those lines that might enhance the playthrough that people might easily miss. Basically, it's something that has to be easily missed until you start looking at the internet and then you probably discover that most things have been discovered before me, but in the spirit of Starfield being just around the corner, I thought there would probably be no worse time for this video, actually. <laughs> But I guarantee you other videos on this topic will lack two things that I possess, those being my twisted sense of humour and also my absolute lack of sound social media business strategy. So with that in mind, let's begin. It's always a safe bet to begin with a nice easy going one. So we've come to Diamond City, the shining jewel of the Commonwealth or something. Now we need to come here within the in-game dates of the 25th to 31st of December, and for most people that will require a decent amount of waiting around, which crawls along and you can only set it to 24 hours, so in reality that nice easy one I was talking about is actually rather tedious. So once we find ourselves within those dates, if we leave the main Diamond City interior and then immediately come back, the place will be full of Christmas lights and trees and things. I'll admit it's a bit out of season for when you're going to watch this video, but it's a thing that you can do. I guess it's just attention to detail where it doesn't necessarily count. Or should I say, attention to 16 times the detail. Speak of the devil, for our second secret also in Diamond City, we need to mooch over to the Dugout Inn. Whilst skulking about the place, you'll notice plenty of paintings on the walls. In the room, crudely numbered one, we will find a particularly interesting painting. It appears to depict a French general, but the face is actually that of Todd Howard, executive director at Bethesda, and occasional scapegoat. Starfield better be good and polished and have no glitches whatsoever, Todd, or the painting gets it. In fact, on that note, I've already shot it. I like to think that somebody snuck this in while Todd Howard wasn't looking, but I don't think I'd put it past him fantasizing about being Napoleon for some reason. I doubt Todd Howard will ever watch this video, but if you are watching Todd, firstly that explains a lot and secondly, if you want to be Napoleon, don't underestimate the rabbits. Nobody's gonna get that, are they? For our third secret, on the Brotherhood of Steel blimp that floats in the air looking kind of obnoxious, we can find what's referred to as an experimental plant. If it looks familiar, that's because it's Nernroot from the Elder Scrolls franchise. It's quite a mystical plant as it makes this glistening sound that allows the player to detect that it's nearby. It's perhaps the only plant that encourages you to rip it out of the earth. Its presence in Fallout 4 appears to just be little more than an easter egg, otherwise it has some Elder Scrolls lore shattering implications. For our fourth secret, if you head to an abandoned shack out in the glowing sea, you might find the snazzy US Covert Operations Manual. Its cover reads, not the soldiers you're looking for. It's a little Star Wars nod. Very nice. For secret number five, if we head to this location called Backstreet Apparel, in one of the bathrooms we can find a teddy bear with glasses reading a newspaper whilst taking a fluffy dump. It's as confusing to me as it is to probably many others as it's a reference to a film called Ted. I've never seen this film, but it's about Mark Wahlberg and his vulgar teddy bear and now I have dropped it in the toilet altogether. And with five of the secrets down, we take a momentary pause from today's chaos to discuss this video's sponsor. 
Ridge. If you have ever contemplated getting a Ridge wallet, now might just be the best time. Ridge have once again partnered up with Hennessy for their summer sweepstakes. The Ridge wallet is a snazzy compact wallet that holds 12 cards plus room for cash, leaving plenty of room in your pockets for other everyday essentials such as your phone, keys, detonators to weapons of mass destruction and a little snacky snack for later. Speaking of weapons, these wallets are durable. I've run many over and they always come up looking dandy. They are virtually indestructible. They can take a beating and protect your cards from highly unlikely scenarios. This means these wallets are durable enough to come equipped with a lifetime warranty. They also fare well against more likely scenarios being equipped with RFID blocking technology to prevent digital pickpocketing. The Ridge wallets look sleeker, last longer and come in 30 plus colours and styles such as carbon fibre, forged titanium and this new snazzy Hennessy style that just looks stylish. You can also get an AirTag attachment to ensure that you never lose your wallet again. But why stop there? Why not check out the Ridge key case too? They securely hold up to six keys, prevent jingling in your pocket, which allows for stealth mastery. On top of that, they come in many colors and styles so you can match your wallet and you can get up to 30% off on your order when buying a Ridge wallet and key case together. Ridge has over 80,000 five-star reviews and Ridge is so confident you'll like your wallet that they're willing to give you a 99-day test drive that you can send back for a full refund if you're less than satisfied. And if you live in the US, it gets even sweeter. Without spending a dollar, you can enter on their website for a chance to win a brand new upgraded Hennessy Ford Bronco Velociraptor or a $75,000 cash alternative. You get an extra entry for every dollar spent on the site and custom Hennessy products come with up to a thousand entries. Use my code fishy at ridge.com forward slash fishy for 10% off and 10 bonus entries at the checkout. That's ridge.com forward slash fishy. There is no better time than right now to revolutionize your wallet. And with that said, back to the video. Still here? Good. Did you know the petrol station where you meet dog meat is called Red Rocket? which means dog pee For secret number six, whilst exploring the Commonwealth nearby to a location called Walden Pond, you might happen upon this interesting structure made of cars that is also home to a super mutant behemoth, so definitely deal with that before you inspect. This unmarked location is referred to as Car Henge, which is a reference to a real-life Car Henge that happens to be in Nebraska, which in itself is a replica of Stonehenge, but made of cars. Which is of course the most American way to replicate a World Heritage Site. But I'm not knocking it, it's very cool, and it's also cool that it's in Fallout 4. Where it may stand for all eternity and inspire the future generations of the now absolutely obliterated world. Also in this area near Walden Pond, we can find this delightful little shack that occasionally gets used by traders. Now this place, has paintings of cats everywhere, but not only that, it has actual cats too. It appears whoever lived here really liked cats. Now, as a dog person, the next secret is quite an interesting one. It regards a particular perk that's been present since Fallout 3, known as the Mysterious Stranger. Effectively, when you enter vats, there is a certain percentage of chance that a random guy shows up in a trench coat and finishes off your enemy for you before disappearing like he was never there. Naturally, amongst Fallout fans, the character of the mysterious stranger has become something of an interesting mystery, perhaps one that, as a secret in this video, I will fail to do justice. But Bethesda of course twigged on to the fan interest, so they play on that a little bit with Nick Valentine in Fallout 4. As it turns out, everyone's favourite synth detective is aware of the existence of the mysterious stranger and has been tracking him for some time. According to documents found at the secure location that is under his bed, he has a case file. It reads as follows. Case, the mysterious stranger. Sightings of a man dubbed the mysterious stranger have been popping up sporadically across the US for years now. Best case, the man's an immoral lunatic. Worst case, a prolific serial killer. All anyone knows is his modus operandi, appearing suddenly, killing without remorse, disappearing without a word. The stranger has no known accomplices, no clear method for selecting his targets, no calling cards left behind. Sightings range from the NCR all the way to the East Coast, stretching back decades. Now he's come to the Commonwealth. Last thing this place needs is another psychopath running amok, 
time to start putting together the pieces to put this one away. Description, human male, outfits vary, but most recent sightings describe a large overcoat and fedora. Guy has taste, I'll give him that much. One man, multiple men, a ghoul with minimal scarring, might explain the long passages of time between sightings, appears and disappears suddenly, suggesting preternatural infiltration ability slash access to advanced cloaking tech. All but earliest descriptions suggest the stranger uses only conventional arms, making infiltration training more likely. Perps like this make me wish the Institute had sprung for thermal detection before giving me the boot. Sighting locations, Commonwealth confirmed, Capital Wasteland confirmed, NCR, old rumours, Shady Sands, really old rumours. So we know that Nick Valentine both doesn't trust the mysterious stranger, and it's the case that keeps him awake at night, but it becomes dynamic when Nick is your companion and the mysterious stranger appears. Slipped right through our fingers. It's clear that Valentine has a nemesis. For our ninth secret in the Brotherhood of Steel Quest Quarter Mastery, we are sent to retrieve a flux sensor, which can spawn at a random location. For me, it was up in Far Harbor. In my opinion, kind of a piss take. The serial number on the flux sensor's model is a reference to the Nostromo, the ship from Alien a modified Lockmart CM88B Bison with the registration number 18092460909, which happens to be the registration number seen on the flux sensor. Some would argue a very cleverly hidden easter egg indeed. Our final secret of the day requires us to be over the level of 20. It's only at this point where at this location on the map you might happen upon a crashed, unidentified flying object. Though I suppose it's not flying anymore, so it's just an unidentified object. But it's a UFO. You can see what it's trying to go for, it makes sense. Along with it, you might pick up a frequency for some garbled noise and some green blood in front of the vessel that leads you on a bit of a trail north. Following it will lead you to this unmarked cave entrance that you can venture inside and it's in here where you will find an alien with a crippled leg. Not the most aliens we've gotten out of the Fallout franchise. Fortunately, this fella is quite easy to kill. From its body, we can loot the alien gun and over 300 rounds of ammunition. Though when you run out, I'm not entirely sure where you're supposed to get more. You can't really ask him. And that brings us nicely to the end of today's list of secrets that probably range in obscurity. I'd imagine most people have probably heard of most of those, but if you did find something new in this video, that that's ideal, I guess. In failing providing something new, I hope this video has at least given you the entertaining humour that comes out only when I'm sleep deprived. So I want to thank you all for watching anyway. I hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends, all that wonderful stuff would be massively appreciated, of course. Starfield is, of course, much closer than on the horizon now, and I'm cautiously optimistic. I do look forward to it. I can't pretend that I don't look forward to it. But, you know, with Bethesda Game Studios, kind of what to expect. But if this is the first video you've watched of mine and you liked it, maybe consider sticking around. There will be some Starfield-related content or at least I hope there will be, because that's the plan. If there isn't, something has gone seriously wrong. Besides that, you can check out my History Channel Decades via a link in the description if that's something you're into. There's a video on there about Stonehenge. There's also a video on there that fleetingly mentions the time Napoleon was attacked by a horde of rabbits. There's some amusing stuff, there's some sad stuff, it's all just good fun. But look, if Decades isn't for you, or History isn't for you, or anything like that, even if I'm not for you, it's perfectly fine. But I wish you all the very best, and with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video, hopefully at some point sooner than 10 days. For me, that's just not kind of right. It doesn't sit right in my belly. It probably should, it just kind of doesn't. But look, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>